Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brian Padovich here. Let's give an update on the weather today and start talking about our winter weather chances coming up later this week in the middle of the week. What a windstorm we've got ongoing. Those storms blew through this morning, had gusts to 60 miles per hour here in Charlotte. And you can see those advancing near the coast. So everyone's seen this on the coast. That If you haven't seen the storms yet, trust me, it's going to stay windy. And behind the front, we're seeing a ton of wind as well. Very gusty winds today. Maybe not as strong as with the actual storms, but this northwest flow, that cold air invection we call it, will produce wind gusts today between 40 and 50 miles per hour, but pretty much more in that 30 to 40 mile per hour range. So just be ready. This is going to be a breezy day. But this front's doing something else. It's bringing in the cold air, which is sitting over the middle of the country. This is going to lay the groundwork for our winter weather the middle of this week. I'm going to quickly turn on the surface temperatures here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn off the satellite imagery and we'll put on the uh, surface temperatures just so you can see how cold this air mass is that's heading in from the northwest. So this is going to lay the groundwork for our winter weather this week. This cold air is diving mainly this direction, but enough of it is going to be in the Carolinas that our next storm, which will be on Wednesday, will eventually bring us the potential for some wintry weather as we get towards Wednesday into Thursday. So let's break it down for you. We'll get into the details here, but we will not have amounts yet. It's still too far out to give you the exact amounts. So remember where we are. We're in the three to five day range. We're right here. So the timing is coming into clear picture. Wednesday into Thursday, primarily Wednesday, Wednesday night. Um, the sleet, snow, ice, I wish I could tell you we know exactly, but I could tell you one thing's for sure. It will not be all snow. Everybody look at me. It will not be all snow. If I can tell you one thing, it will not all be snow. So please get that out of your mind right now. These storms are rarely, if ever, all snow. And if you've been in the Carolinas any length of time, you know what I'm talking about. So what will fall? Well, let's talk about some of the probabilities of seeing some wintry weather. So first, we got to focus on the temperatures. This is a look at our temperatures this week. You could see that time frame Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, cold weather, overnight lows, really chilly. I think this is banking on at least some precipitation, sleet, ice, snow being on the ground. The fact that it's so cold, but plenty cold enough that we'll have a wintry mix. The one thing that's important, people often look at the surface temperature and go, oh, Brad, it's 35, 38 degrees. How can we get snow? Remember, you can get snow and sleet at temperatures up to 40 degrees because it's, it's what the temperature is in the cloud, not at the ground. The only thing that you need at the ground to get um, 32 degrees is freezing rain. It has to be 32 degrees or lower at the surface to get freezing rain, believe it or not. All the other winter precip types, it can actually be warmer, um, which is kind of weird because freezing rain means it's 32 at the ground, but it's really warm above our heads. When we get snow or sleet, it could actually be 35, 35, 38, 39 degrees, but it could be 20 below, you know, 10,000 feet up. So it's, it's the flip, it's colder above our heads, than it is at the ground. So we've got plenty of cold air in place. Here's a look at the latest winter weather chances. So if you if you watch me, I've shown these a couple times. You can see most of our areas in the 10 to 30 percent range. You get along just south of actually Interstate 40. It's in the 30 to 50 percent range. And then up here in the Virginia, North Carolina border area, uh, north of 40 between Winston-Salem and Greensboro, it's 50 to 70 percent. And then the highest chance of wintry precip is up here in Virginia. And again, this is for uh, two to three inches of snow or sleet. It, I really emphasize, this is just not snow. This product takes into account sleet as well. And sleet, you know, half an inch of sleet can accumulate pretty quickly. It's the same as a half an inch of, of water. It's just frozen rain on the way down on the ice pellets that reach the surface. So let's get into the forecast here. I'm gonna show you a couple pieces of guidance that will kind of show you um, the track of this, but it's not going to be exact. And I'll explain as I get into this. All right. So we picked this up. This is going to be the European model just for full transparency. I'm not putting one, one, you know, egg in one basket versus the other. I get questions all the time, Brad, which model should I look at? You should look at all of them. And if you can't, then don't focus on one. Never focus on one piece of data. Um, there's not one model that's better than the other. There's some that have strengths and weaknesses, but you have to understand, this is where the expertise of a meteorologist comes in handy. Um, every storm is different, every event is different. So saying one model is great and the other one's garbage, that doesn't really the way it works. We use all of the tools in the toolkit when we do a forecast. That's the biggest problem with apps. Apps take one piece of data. People often ask me, why is my app so crazy? Or they get all caught up in the amount of snow that this thing shows you. 
And I say, this is the thing about that is you might get excited, but it's not giving you all the information. It's giving you one piece of information. I like to look at everything. We have a saying in meteorology, all models are wrong, but all models are useful. So <clears throat> that means that some are telling you some, some hints and actually a little piece of information about the pattern. So the European model here, the setup is the same in all of the guidance. We've got high pressure probably over the Northeast, the Great Lakes. The location of that is questionable, but it's gonna provide cold, dry air, kind of the wedge and low pressure, a Miller A type setup is gonna to head towards the coast, get here and then crank up, okay? So this is our more typical winter weather setup. So you can see as we go through Wednesday, and just to give you an idea, this is Wednesday morning. We'll go into Wednesday afternoon. Um, I'm gonna stop it right here, um, Wednesday around one o'clock. So low pressure is trying to form on the coast here. You can see snow, but also a wintry mix here. And again, the thing that gives me pause, even in this guidance is the, what we call the rain snow line thickness is actually up here. So the chances of this being all snow is pretty close to zero. Um, I would say probably start to snow, but it's gonna change to probably sleet or freezing rain at some point. And again, it could be a mix of all four, right? I think if there's one thing you can remember about winter weather here, I say one out of eight, maybe one out of 10 storms is ever all snow. So count on it being a mix of rain, sleet, freezing rain, and snow. Um, and off, oftentimes it's more of the others than it is snow. So you see that kind of move through and then the low cranks up, which is the interesting part of this forecast because depending on whether or not this low cranks up, and what I mean by crank up, the low pressure gets strong, it starts pulling in more moisture. Two things happen when this, this occurs brings in more moisture, but it also pulls in cold air from the north. So when this low gets strong, there is sometimes this band, this deformation zone that sets up. It's uh, something we call 700 millibar uh, fr front frontal genesis, basically the front up around 700 millibars in the atmosphere. But what happens is you get a really heavy snow band, a deformation band sets up. So this is the key part where if someone's gonna get a bunch of snow, it's probably gonna be because this low cranks up on the coast, but you notice the, the temperature is here real marginal. And just real quickly, I'm going to give you a sounding. Um, we'll get into the weeds a little bit here. If you look at this sounding, there's this warm pocket up here around one kilometer off the ground. At the ground, it's 26 degrees, but it's way warmer up here, almost 10 degrees warmer. And so when you look down here, it, it thinks this is going to be sleet and there's no um, nuclei for, 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 for snowflakes in the sounding. So this all screams freezing rain or sleet. So just be cautious, sleet is always a big problem in these storms and it will cut the snow totals tremendously as they as it develops. So sleet right there, that's a lot of sleet. That's what the red is. The sleet is gonna be the red or purple or freezing rain, kind of a combination of all of them. And again, that, that's a lot of freezing rain and sleet mixing in there. So if one thing I will tell you about the European model, if you're gonna look at it, don't look at the snow totals because they're wrong. Um, look at the ice totals. The ice totals tell you the story. There's a lot of ice in this in this model in particular. Now, let's look at the ensembles because I'm a big fan of ensembles. These are the probabilities of seeing one inch of snow um, basically through, I'm going to show you real quick, through Thursday night. Move my head down here. If you look carefully, um, you can see this tight gradient from 10, 5 to 10 percent, basically across Mecklenburg County. It goes from nothing to the typical Lake Norman 60%. There's a tight gradient. When I see a tight gradient, that means there's gonna be a ton of mixing in here and we're not good enough to say where this line is gonna set up. Um, but also notice the, the higher chances, 80 to 90%, really don't come into picture until you get into Virginia. That means there's a lot of uncertainty about snowfall here. Basically saying, hey, there's gonna be some, but it's likely a lot of mixing. Just the fact that we don't have one inch numbers that high is telling me something. Now the GFS, same piece of uh, information from a different model, but this is ensemble members. Same thing was starting through Wednesday. This, this run is just coming in, by the way. You can kind of see the same kind of setup here. I'm gonna let's go back one run just because we don't have all the data for this one yet, but I'll be interested to see what it says. Kind of look at, see what the, the GFS says. It's a little bit further north. So in Charlotte, this is why in Charlotte, you can't get super excited for snow because this is really trending, trending north if anything, and this tells me ice, ice, ice. I mean, this has got a lot of ice and sleet mixing in. So again, we showed you this, but what is gonna fall? This is what I think is gonna happen right now. We're not gonna get into totals because it's way too early. Remember, one to three days 
three days out max. So that would be tonight or early tomorrow. I think we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow. But if you had to ask me right now, what do I think is gonna fall? I think the highest chance of seeing snow, obviously the mountains, and then up here near the Virginia border and north. This looks like just a wintry mess. Probably sleet, freezing rain, and some snow. But the further south you go, less snow and more rain mixes in until you get into South Carolina and it's all rain. So that's kind of the thinking right now. The timing, Wednesday into Wednesday night, lingering into Thursday, but probably moving out. But that's what we know right now. There's a lot of unknowns. I wish I could tell you everything, but um, we just don't know. I'm going to be very honest with you and show you what we do know and what we don't know. But there is going to be wintry weather. I do expect impacts here, primarily on the roads. My biggest concern, if I have a concern right now, I honestly hope it's all snow because that would be great. Everyone would be happy. Sure, there'd be some road issues and with school closures and stuff. But my biggest concern in this setup is there's a lot of indications, not all of them, of significant ice in somewhere in the Carolinas. So that's my concern right now, that somebody is going to get an epic ice storm out of this and not snow. So right now, just be prepared for all of those possibilities and don't get hung up on clickbait snow headlines. Snow, snow, snow. It's not going to be all snow. <laughs> I wish it was. That would be great. Let's hope it's all snow, but the ice threat is really big with this. So stay tuned. I'll have updates throughout the week. This was a long vlog, but there is a lot going on. Kind of tells you the complex complexity, uh, complexity. I'll spit it out. Complexity of this system <laughs> as it gets closer to us. It's got me tongue tied already. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a winter impact for sure. The question is the type of precip that falls. So stay tuned for updates. I will post more information as it becomes available.